be here. It's an honor, and it's a, it's a dauntingly uh, impressive set of uh, panelists. Uh, no one else seemed to have to say this, but uh, I suppose that one difference between the IMF and the World Bank is it's possible to speak for the IMF, and I am not uh, speaking for the IMF. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, that uh, you know, maybe goes without saying. So uh, I think uh, let, me, let me start back and say that I do think inequality is different from, uh, from growth and poverty. So I, I, kinda, I, I thought what a lot of what Martin said and others have, have since repeated Santiago is exactly right. But, but there's another sense in which inequality is more, more interesting uh, than, than poverty, at least. When we, when we think about poverty and we talk about poverty, certainly at the IMF, the instinct or the, the, the habit and, and, and the practice is to, is to largely say, well, okay, we have to have good programs to address poverty. That's not really our uh, job. Uh, uh, we could see what the bank thinks about that. But in, when we think about inequality, uh, we, we tend to think about much broader issues. We, anyway, all of us, I think, when we think about inequality, we think about broader issues, whether it's power structures and elite capture or it's trade policy and the role of globalization. Uh, or other, or, in the, or, or, or uh, computerization and its effects on relative wages, or the wage premium. There's a bunch of much more, inter well, more interesting, but much broader kind of structural and economic questions that come up. And so I think the inequality discussion is, uh, is hopefully enriching in that way. Logically, in a sense, I think it's true. It's a corollary of thinking about growth and thinking about poverty. So this is more of a, a rhetorical point, maybe, than a... Than a uh, a logical one, but I still think it's, we, we certainly have seen it today. Uh, at the fund, um, actually, I'd like to, you know, when I think about what we do at the fund, partly I want to associate myself with what I guess Anisha said, asked, which is, what does any of this matter for policy? And, and, and I didn't hear an answer on the first panel. I'm afraid I don't really have an answer either. But, but there are elements of it in the discussion, and I want to, I want to come back to that. What, what, I think uh, at, the, at, the, at the fund, I don't think, one reason I was sort of hesitant to, to answer that we, there needs to be a formalization of, of a new target is that I, I do think it's inescapable that, that, power, that inequality, because it's so broad, or is, is very complex, and it's very hard to come up with one or a small number of measures that are uniformly interesting. In a place like the U.S., to, to look at the top 10 percent misses the drama of the last 30 or 40 years, as many have convincingly argued. On the other hand, there may be places where, where it really is all, or many, there are surely many places where it really is more about the bottom 40% and the top 10% and, and the sets of dynamics that, that, that go on there. And, and, and so I'm not really in favor of an indicator. I think we need, we need more data. It's really boring for a researcher to say we need more, more data, but we do. Uh, data is a public good. As was said, there's been great work done with PopCal Net and other databases and other work, but, but we need, uh, we, we have a remarkably small amount. So at the fund, uh, there is a there. Uh, I think there's a lot of openness and, and interest in the question. It comes partly from the top, I think. It comes partly from staff uh, uh, who go out and, and 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 talk to people in in countries and 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 get questions. I think as much as anything, and and it certainly then it comes from circumstances in the world, and including mainly in, in our clients. It's not that when uh, we go on our U.S. Article Four, we're you know, bombarded with questions about inequality, but but in other contexts, uh, we we do run across that the authorities have questions. They they want to know. You know, if we're advising on various policies, uh, uh, what's it going to mean for inequality? What's it going to mean for growth? Now, going back to this issue that there's no one measure, I would say that much of the concern is not really about inequality per se, that we observe in our clients, including I mostly work in the in, poor, in low income countries, IDA eligible type countries. But I think it's certainly true in emerging markets. It's mostly uh, what we call at the fund the jobs and growth agenda. It, people want good jobs. They want you know the, the people are worried kind of about middle class uh, and manufacturing jobs, sustainability of growth, and a bunch of things that are related to inequality but are not the same. So if you, I, don't, I actually don't want to name countries, but there are not many countries where they say, okay, help us reduce inequality. But there are many where they say, help us make sure that growth is pro poor in some sense they have in mind. So that brings me to, I guess, my last point for now. I can't remember if I've answered the question, but, but uh, we don't have a lot of tools. We know very little. I think a key, uh, a key issue that, that we've been working on a bit recently, in, in some broad ways, is, is the role of fiscal policy. And I, so I really think if there's one measure that I find most interesting in the first panel, it, it's, it's uh, NORA's. Because I think 
it's amazing how many macro papers there are. Really macro, I mean, I'm a macroeconomist, and there's how many macroeconomic papers don't even mention whether they're talking about net or you know inequality, market inequality, or or after tax and subsidy inequality, and it's a huge difference. All this, many of the political economy stories about the importance of inequality have to do with net inequality or you know after tax inequality. On, on the other hand, many of issues with things like globalization or computerization have to do with gross inequality and so on. So I think, and we don't, and one thing that is a policy instrument is fiscal policy, which we don't know much about. It's really hard to know outside the OECD and outside NORA's six countries or whatever they are. You have more now, I know, but I'm plugging you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, but, 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 but outside of those countries, it's not clear what, what governments do for, for, for inequality or transfers. Uh, and and I, I do think that's very important, but to finally to circle around, I think it, I think staff in the fund, you know, it's easier for us to write chap. It's easy for us to write chapters in regional economic outlooks about growth and inequality in Africa and things like that, or growth and poverty. What's much harder is when country when the authorities say, well, you know, tell us something we can use. What can we do? We have very little idea, and I think we're trying to work on that. Uh, but to give you an example of the the difficulties, you know, we wrote this paper saying that inequality is bad for sustainability of growth if you just look across the pattern of, uh, of history, post-war history. But, but one of the theor reasons people, people argue that inequality is bad for growth, at least there are some academic papers along these lines, is that unequal countries do stuff with fiscal policy and other policies to try and make themselves more equal, and that's bad for growth. It's the fiscal channel, as, as they say. And it, it, I'm not saying that's true, but if that is the reason inequality is bad for growth, then the policy conclusion is very tricky, or it's obvious. It's, it's, you know, you shouldn't, you, you should, you should relax. Uh, I, and we're trying to work on that now, but there isn't much data. That comes back to where I'm saying uh, 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 we have to work, we have to make more data. So, so I think there's a, really a, a problem where the rubber meets the road for actual policymakers about about what to do. Certainly at the sort of macro kind of level.